Welcome to the studio at That Nerd Show. I am Marcus Blake, and we are film makeup, uh, which is premiering at Sundance this week. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Ham Tran, and I'm the um, writer-director of MICA. Hi, my name is Jenny chang Le, and I'm the producer of MICA. All right. Well, let's jump in and talk about this film. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. It's a beautiful film. The inspiration uh, behind the story. Uh, the the film itself is um, was inspired by a Czechoslovakian TV show in the 1970s, um, and it was and it's called, called "The Girl Who Fell Out of the Blue Sky." It's oh, about the Korean okay. girl who crashes into the Slavic mountains and meets a group of kids. And so um, this was this was a TV series that was made in the 70s, but then it found an audience in Vietnam in the late 80s and early 90s. And I mean, it spawned a whole, a whole following, right? To the, to point, the point where, we, where, yeah, yeah. To the point where people were naming their kids Micah, yeah. right? And they also had like this, the, the Micah in the, the Czechoslovakian show yeah. had like a, a bowl cut bay right. and all the kids oh, in Vietnam had the same haircut. They called it the Micah cut. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. And my and my apologies to our audience for mispronouncing the name. Oh yeah. No, no, no. See, yeah. I I think that's kind of an interest. It's a difference between Western and Eastern audiences because I mean, for us, the only thing that we really know about always, you know, the man who fell from Earth or mm -hmm. fell from Earth. Uh, very different. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, do you feel this particular story works better? with children because you know they're more innocent they're not so fearful of something that seems strange mm. um yeah i mean this this is a um family sci-fi film you know and so i think that we, well it's also because we wanted to make a film that that um reminds people of their childhood you know the, the, right. the fans of the original tv show so we wanted to keep it very young and we wanted to sort of create a whole new generation of Micah fans, right? Right. And so, and so, you know, coming up with this, with this story, we, our take is also very, very different, right? right. Um, uh -huh. Because in the show, she meets a whole group of kids and it was all about her doing a, like a press conference and a delegation. Right. This, this take is a lot more personal, right? It's more of like, it's, it's a little boy's story and how he overcomes his, his sadness about uh -huh. losing his mother. So, the message about family is so much stronger in this yeah. film. And so, you know, th and that works for the family sci-fi film, right? Uh, right. It's a, it's a very strong message for the family. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's funny to talk about sci-fi because most sci-fi stories aren't necessarily sci-fi. They're, they're more rooted in, in adult themes and, mm -hmm. you know, even, I mean, even if you're a Star Trek fan, if you really series, they didn't center so much on younger audiences as they did with adult themes. Mm -hmm. I, I think that sci-fi, it's, 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 it's taking us out of this world, but at the same time, the story is all very human, right? Yeah. And the core of every sci-fi film is a very human and story, right? It's right. sort of it's like right. human behavior from, from an audience perspective. Right. So I think that that's what really lends itself to, you know, having this really personal story um, in our film. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that I got from it is it's kind of a lesson on how we should react if we have first contact. And understanding that maybe they're not here to destroy us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> although, although that was the first question. Was right. the first question like, uh, like, are you here to kill us? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we quickly quickly got over that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then it was like, and then it was just about being friends, you know, about like what is the, what right. is friendship, you know. That. Well, my take on on the whole sci-fi and, and the alien side of it too is that you know. Um, her the entire concept of Micah is based on vibration. It's mm. all based on sound. And that's, and that's, that's, that's 
these days I'm finding that I'm starting to meditate more and more. Right. And so I really try to work those those themes into the film. But it's all about sound. Yeah. Yeah. Micah, I have this um, um what is it? It's a, it's a specific 852 megahertz or something like that, uh, frequency, which gets the heart to calm down, right? And so it's it, it's layered. It's very layered, you know, for for the nerds. This is this is why I'm sharing because you know, we're on the nerd show, right? And so uh, it's very nerdy, and it's sort of like it, it's the concept of meditation. She is bringing home closer to understanding what's in the heart. You hear the nail on the head about layers. Every great sci-fi story has many, many layers, you know, with its characters and how they react with one another, and especially with. Um, so I want to talk about casting. I mean, when you're dealing with a young cast, how did you find uh, the young actors for this movie? I found the lead boy from a commercial that I had done, and so he, he he was so natural in the way that that he found his own motivation for everything. So all I had to do was explain to him. And then, you know, when it wasn't his turn to shoot, he was off, he was fine. He was, you know, fine, hanging out by himself, <laughs> making up a little story, making up little games, you know? And then when it was his turn um, to have his shot, he was so focused. All he had to do was to know what was going on. And yeah. so it's just- He's very smart. Interpret it back in his way of being. And actually I would free him from, from the lines. I go, don't say it this way. Just <laughs> How would you say it, right? And so I really uh, need the kid, kids up to, to, to express, express themselves the way they, they want. Want. Yeah, because of course kids, you know, speak differently than adults. Sure. And, and, and it's really hard for us to get into the head of a kid and then how a kid would talk, you know? Um, um, the, other, yeah, the other two, we actually had a casting director who was a really great dear friend of ours. We actually did it. We were in a theater group together back in like, like the late 90s <laughs> and uh, still friends to this day. And um, we the the girl we found in Hanoi, which is a you know northern part of Vietnam. Right. And so we we had we had like a young filmmaker go out and, and, and shoot like an audition tape. And when we got the tape back, her eyes were just half the size of her head. <laughs> so freaking cute that we're like, okay, this the girl you know and and it, it worked out because she's since she's northern her accent is different than the southern vietnamese accent you know and so that's why we have the joke in there when whom is like oh, oh you're, you're from hanoi i thought you were an alien <laughs> it's like a little bit of a, a joke you know them. what i was actually wondering about that i that's something i didn't know about uh how the difference in accents yeah. Um, yeah. Huh, interesting yeah so it's, so it's like like a, like a boston accent and a you know <laughs> My podcast co-host will find that funny since he's actually from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not, I'm not saying Boston. <laughs> <laughs> And then the third, the third, the third chubby boy. Um, he's been performing since he was four. So our casting director found him as well, and he's a delight. Like he's sing, he sings, he dances, he sings Kai Lung, which is beating his opera. He raps. <laughs> well, you know what? You you talk about directors. Um, I think writing dialogue for kids has probably got to be the hardest thing because as adults, you don't know how they speak. Mm -hmm. You know, and for you to allow them to improvise with it um i don't know many directors that actually that we've interviewed over the years that have that same kind of direction is like you know how do you do this i i think it's for me, yeah. for me it, it comes from um it comes from our theater experience because we you know when jenny and i used to be in the theater trip together we were work with non-actors right we were work with non-actors a lot and so part of working with non-actors is getting them to relate to the story and the yeah. script and so part of the thing that freezes people up is having to remember the lines exactly what they're written, right. right? And so when you're saying to them, don't worry about the line, as long as you know what's going on in the scene, just say what comes natural to you and it will be okay. Right. I think Larry David would really like that, right? Because like, <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, the main inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so is this, uh, 
is this the first time that American audiences are uh, seeing Micah? Yes. yes. Okay. So we're so excited, so honored to be part of Sundance 22. Yeah. I mean, him and I have been, you know, working and, and living in Vietnam for over 20 years. And so when we've made many films, but always with the idea of, okay, this is a Vietnamese film for the Vietnamese audience to be released in theatrical in Vietnam. And it was our, you know, our producing partners, Bao and Anderson, that really pushed us to commit to Sundance. Because right. we never really thought that, okay, this is a film to submit to Sundance, mm -hmm. you know? Like, even though, you know, Ham's first film, Journey from the Fall, was at Sundance, but right. we, you know, we don't think, okay, what's a festival <laughs> film, you know? And so we're just so, we were so amazed to get the news and that, and then to find out that Micah is the first Vietnamese produced feature film to play at Sundance. And it's such an honor. Wow. Okay. Now that, I didn't know that. That, wow. So this you has know, been short films, but this is the first time. Oh, fantastic. Well, what a great way to kind of start off the new year too, especially coming from a pandemic is, you know, having this at Sundance. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Question. And it's the nerdy question that we ask every filmmaker that we interview. So here it is. All right. If you could have or a weapon of choice to fight the forces of evil, what would you choose? And I'm going to start with the director. Whoa, my <laughs> weapon of choice. <laughs> Any kind of weapon? Any kind anything, of weapon? Anything from the nerd universe. We're always curious what you would personally choose. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I would choose the the gun that makes them teleport because then I'll just, I'll just send them somewhere else because then I won't feel guilty about killing them. Right? Oh, that's a good answer. Right? I, won't, I won't have that on the mic. That, 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 that sounds like a director that's that, that's the perfect way to deal with you know divas on set. <laughs> Back to the training. <laughs> How about you, Jenny? Um, I would say it would would like a, a stopping time be considered a weapon, or is that more of a superpower? <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we're very peaceful. Stop time and then run away. <laughs> but I also feel like these are two great things for filmmakers. You know, when you don't have enough time to get stuff done, we'll just stop it. And uh, uh, it. Yeah, real. I always <laughs> wish we had more time. <laughs> <laughs> very telling. It's a very producing answer. That's true. Yeah, that's a great answer. Well, thank you very much for interviewing with us. Uh, very excited to dance for you. Um, and the best of luck with it. We can't wait to see uh, what happens with the film. Thanks, thank Marcus. you so much. Thank you.